Tonight, some hot news from the Game Developer Conference and some good news for cord cutters. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 287 for Wednesday, March 4th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the news. This week, we've been talking about Microsoft's brand new Lumia 640 and Lumia 640 XL. Now, these are $250 phones without a contract. The phones themselves are pretty basic about what you'd expect for a $250 phone. But what's interesting about them is that they come with a free year subscription to Microsoft Office 365. Here to talk about why Microsoft might be doing this is Alex Wilhelm from TechCrunch. Welcome, Alex. Good to be back. Thank you for having me. Well, why would they give away a year of office? That's $70 to $120 per subscription. Why would they do that for every phone? Well, the marginal cost to actually have a new subscriber to O365 is probably like $2 a year. So it's not a lot of actual outlay for them. And I think what they're trying to do is leverage a brand that's working very well, Office, and use it to kind of prop up their mobile strategy, which has been lagging for the last, you know, ever. Um, I don't know how well this is going to convert. Uh, I know they have a new deal with Deutsche Telekom, uh, which will involve this specific uh, office deal. And so perhaps... That will be something they can leverage to help grow their market share. But I think right now they're just very focused on getting more devices out the door. And this is one way they decided to kind of pursue and push that strategy. So if you buy the these phones and you have the Office 365 subscription, then you can use it on a desktop or a laptop also? Yes. So it, it should work across all your platforms for an entire year. So you'll have desktop office, you'll have online office, more cloud storage, more Skype minutes, whatever, um, for a year. And then it all turns off. So I think their plan is like, you know, get this deal out there, sell more phones, get more potential subscribers. And then when a year lapses and all of a sudden they don't have more OneDrive, they don't have more Skype minutes, they go, all right, now I'll just pay for it. So then they sold the phone and have a new subscriber. So it's kind of a double whammy, if you will. It's a right. lot of cliche, sorry. <laughs> right. So, I mean, Google does this already. I mean, they give away their Office suite. It's not as good as Microsoft Office. But, I mean, how do they do it? Well, that's the bet here. I mean, Microsoft is essentially betting that their productivity tools are so much better than what else is out there that people will pay for them. I mean, uh, Apple has made iWork mostly free. Google has made productivity tools that have been free for you know their entire life, essentially. But Microsoft is betting that people are so office-dependent and office-facing and office-focused that they'll still shell out, even in the age of a lot of free online software. And to their credit, and this surprised me when it happened, it seems to be working. Um, they've sold a lot of subs on the consumer side to this product, and I thought it was going to be a much slower rollout, but I've been kind of proven wrong by the market repeatedly, you know, to my personal chagrin, but it's good for Microsoft. All right. Now, is this the only phone that does this? Are there, there are other phones that give away Office 365? So I spent a lot of time chasing down the answer to that, actually, ironically. And the thing is, I think so. <laughs> I'm like 95% sure. Microsoft actually didn't know. They couldn't find out. I don't know why that's the case, but they tried to chase it down for me, and they literally couldn't tell me for sure. They said, we're nearly positive this is the first time it's happened. Wow. My question is, what happens next? You know, Are they going to roll this out to more phones uh, across maybe the entire Lumia line? Uh, I don't know. But I mean, certainly for now, it's, it's, it's a change in uh, pace, if you will. Right. Well, that makes perfect sense. I actually worked in Microsoft marketing for many years, and that does not surprise me at all. <laughs> there you go. They couldn't find the person, or maybe they didn't want to find and I, I really tried to. I, I called them like 15 times. I was like, can you please just factor this for me? I need one data point. And they're like, yeah, we're, we're working on it. We'll, we'll get to you. <laughs> right. So you also reported that Crafter Marketplace Etsy just filed for a $100 million IPO. Now, yes. does, does that price seem reasonable? Is that a surprise to anyone? I'm presuming the $100 million number is actually a placeholder. If you recall, when Alibaba went public, they put a billion dollars in their, uh, their line item there on their F1, not an S1. It's a little different. Uh, and it was a placeholder number. They raised it. Uh, Box originally went to raise 250 and ended up raising less than that. So that number had been moved around. And whenever you see $100 million, it just feels like just, they're, they're just putting that there for now before they price, think about shares and so forth. So I think... They're going to raise that number maybe by a few hundred million dollars. I mean, if you read the S1, they're a strong company. They have really quickly growing revenues. Essentially, they're break even. On a non-GAAP basis, they're profitable. And, uh, you know, they don't have a lot of debt. So I feel like that's kind of a number that will go up over the next couple of weeks. Right. That's a lot of knitted frogs. It's a lot of knitted frogs and weird dangly earrings and things to put on your head. I think <laughs> the, the three main revenue pillars over at Etsy. Right. And they've been around, what, 10 years, 12 years 
What took no, I don't. I don't know. I should be totally honest. But I mean, they now have like nearly two hundred million dollars in last year revenue. So, however old they are, they've done very, very well for themselves. Well, let's move on to the Game Developer Conference in San Francisco. GDC, of course, is for professionals only. It's a gaming conference that includes programmers, artists, anyone involved in the gaming development industry. You were there. Uh, there are a few announcements that I want to get your take on. Uh, first, sure. NVIDIA's Shield set-top box. Uh, is this for gaming or streaming TV or both? What, what is it for? Well, it costs $200, and it will come with the ability to play, I think it's 50 different games at launch, and it comes with a game remote. So I'm presuming there's kind of a heavy gaming focus there. I, I just don't know if I really want Android on my television, to be frank. Uh, I, I don't mean to be, to be to be flippant, but I mean, it just it doesn't... I, I see no need for the device in my personal life. Now, maybe I'm the outlying case here, but I'm not sure how well it'll sell. It's certainly, it's on the screen now. It's a beautiful device, and the price point's attractive, but I'm not sure what it solves um, for a lot of people. I don't, I, Google, the original Google TV didn't sell that well. Apple TV doesn't sell that well. If this is a gaming device, how does it compete with, you know, the top-tier consoles? And so, to me, I, I don't know where it slots into the market, uh, but certainly NVIDIA is making a pretty big bet on this, so... Well, there is the streaming service. I know there's a, the Shield tablet, and my producer Jason was talking about it this morning. He has one, and he really likes being able to stream video games. But yes. it, it might be a sort of small market. Well, 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 I mean, we'll find out in a couple of months when it comes out and people start buying them. I mean, having a price point means that we know they're actually going to release it. So I'll be curious to see what the sales numbers kind of shake out to be. Right. And uh, your colleague at TechCrunch, Daryl Etherington, said that uh, Etherington said that Game journalists were actually scoffing at this, saying that there was a service called OnLive that, that on Live that tried to do the same thing and already yes. failed. OnLive died in flames. It was too bad. It was a really cool service. It was a way to just stream games to your computer and therefore not to buy them. Um, and it just didn't work out. The, the software, the, so the service, really, uh, never got enough subscribers to make it financially viable and eventually just kind of went out of business. So, I mean, it's but the, the thing is, WebVan failed and then Instacart's done very well since then. So you never want to say that because it didn't work in the past, it can't work now. But I am certainly more skeptical of this than I would be otherwise. Good, good point. I like your web van. Bring up the past. I remember them. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was I think fourteen thousand years ago. I think now. it was. I knew they they did bring me some food at some point um, in a van when I lived in San Francisco. That's all I remember. <laughs> Literally in a van. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I never got the name of web van. Did they bring the internet in like a van? Like here's the oh, internet maybe right the, here's the web. It was the it was Cosmo.com that came in a van, maybe. I don't remember. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this maybe before your time. I'm not sure. Well, um, let's 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 not guess. Okay. <laughs> let's move on to the Oculus VR announcement. Oculus is the virtual reality company owned by Facebook. What was their announcement today? They talked a lot about when they're actually going to release the hardware itself. So Carmack, who's their CTO, famous for his time at ID Games on the, and the Doom franchise specifically, um, said that you really should expect this to come out with the Samsung's next product release cycle. And he also made a note that it's not that much different from what has come out before. I forget the name of the current testing device, but this is the, uh, the actual consumer-facing device. Um, I think people are just really, really excited to have it come out in the market in a mass way and to see how well it sells and see what's built for it and so forth. Um, it actually almost felt a bit like a placeholder announcement as if they were waiting to kind of get it out the door. But, you know, what you see here is a company that's very dependent on, on Samsung on the hardware side to get this stuff done. Um, and so they're kind of dependent in a way and therefore they can't move as fast as they might want to. But then again, I'm not sure if Facebook is really pressing them to get it done because, you know, what's the rush? I mean, there's, this is a 25-year platform. If it's out in two months from now, it's supposed to four, whatever. Doesn't really change much. So right. I just want one. That's all I'm gonna say. I just really want to buy one and put it on my face. So let's wait. So do 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 you have a guess? Was there price info offered, or do you have any guesses as to what the price point might be for something like this? I'm gonna guess it's gonna be just enough money that I don't want to pay for it, but I do anyways. Okay. That's that's, that's my guess. Probably somewhere in that range. Right. So what about improvements? Uh, is it is this gonna have make people sick still? That, that was the com complaints about yeah. the first one. There was some discussion about they had a quote breakthrough in how they display images inside the actual uh, device itself. And if they can do that, maybe they can reduce that problem. I'm not sure precisely how much they're going to change. I mean, I think the Carmack point that they haven't changed that much indicate that we're not going to get a radically different device. Um, and, and from what I've heard from people who have used the current device, it's awesome. So maybe that's why they're not changing that much on the way to uh, the consumer side of this, because if it works, why screw it up? Right, exactly. So now let's move from VR to AR. Microsoft announced oh that they'd be bringing Xbox games to the augmented reality HoloLens headset. They sort of hinted at that already in their um, Windows 10 announcement. But uh, what, what else did they say about this? Well, I mean, I think they want to keep HoloLens in the news. And so precisely they were trying to say, like, look, yeah, we're going to do what you thought we were going to do, but now we're going to say it out loud. 
I mean, who didn't think Xbox games were going to come to the HoloLens? I mean, why wouldn't they? Um, I just think it was good for them to, you know, not drum up interest, but I mean, in front of all these developers, say like, yeah, and whatever you build for Xbox now, think about this in the future because this is coming out as well. Um, I think developers are still relatively unsure about what HoloLens will become when it actually hits the market. And so to have this note that it will work with Xbox titles, I think makes it seem a little more middle of the road and mainstream. Uh, if that will drive interest, yeah, your guess is as good as mine. But I mean, I, I think, you know, the company didn't surprise anyone today by saying what it did. Right. And they didn't give any more timeline for HoloLens. They, huh? They've been relatively mum as far as that, uh, at least with me. I've, I've asked and I've been told nothing. So. Well, I think, I mean, they're, they're really aiming it at, at uh, Minecraft. And my experience with Minecraft is it's aimed for 11 to 12 year olds. So by the time <laughs> those people get to be able to spend the money, you know, have the earning power to buy one, that may be yeah. when, it, when it's out. Well, I played Minecraft on the HoloLens on Microsoft's campus in January. And I don't play Minecraft just personally. I think I played one time for like five minutes. Um, and I had an awesome time doing it. Like, I felt like a child playing with like really awesome Legos. It was it was, no, it was really cool. I didn't want to stop, but they took it off my head and told me I had to leave. Um, but uh, while well, I had the chance, it was really fun and engaging and, like, just immersive. I hate to sound like a, like, a, like a fanboy, but I think the HoloLens is really cool if it comes out and is as capable as we hope that it will be. Right. So it's it's virtual or augmented reality that turns an adult back into a nine-year-old boy, essentially. Well, I wouldn't call me an adult, but you know, <laughs> okay. I'll take the nine-year-old point. That's okay. pretty fair, I think. So you're already halfway there. So those were the things that I thought were cool that that were announced today. Did, did you see anything else or hear about anything else interesting uh, that was at the Game Developer Conference? I'll know? just make a small point. You know, I, I was there at Moscone today. I was in Moscone uh, north, south, and west bouncing around. And I was just shocked at the number of people there. I mean, I knew everyone knows GDC matters. Everyone knows it's a popular event. But I mean, this puts, this is on the same scale as like Google I.O. You know, this is a, a really maxed out massive event. And happily enough, it wasn't just all dudes. You know, I think there's some worry in tech, especially at gaming events, it's, it's going to be single gender and single color. And happily, just looking around, people seem to be a little more diverse than I thought. So my takeaways really were just like, wow, this is massive. And also, thank heavens, it's not just a bunch of white dudes. <laughs> uh, I mean, there were a lot of white dudes, don't get me wrong. But certain, I mean, guilty. But like, you know, there were happily other genders and, 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 and colors there. It just felt good to have a more inclusive or maybe inclusive facing gaming event or sorry, technology event. And also, if you walk in, there's these large placards around the event that have their ethics policy uh, for how you have to behave at the conference if you want to stay. And I thought that was a really good uh, marker to have out there repeatedly saying, you have to be a normal, good human or you're not going to be welcome at our event. And, you know, a lot of people need to be told that. So I think it was, it was good to make sure they were trying to build a very safe environment where everyone felt welcome and could take part. Yeah, that's great. I mean, especially considering the year that, that female gamers had last year. Um, yeah, I well, think, still having this year, Frank. Right, so. yeah, it hasn't. It's gotten better a little bit, but yeah, it is yeah. not good. So as long as I have you here, I thought I'd get your take on one more tech story. There's a sort of scandal brewing about the fact that Hillary Clinton used her personal email address to send and receive mail while she was Secretary of State. Yes. Some people are saying this is worse than what other politicians have done. Some have been using like cloud-based email accounts, like having a Hotmail account. Sure. Uh, they say this is worse because the Clintons completely controlled the email. Uh, do you think this is a scandal or not? Well, we're certainly going to make it into a scandal. I mean, <laughs> given, I mean, whether it is or not is relatively based on your own personal political leanings, but... I think if you look back in time, you'll note that uh, Secretary of State Kerry was the first one to actually use his um, uh, official email address as his main address. I mean, um, so to me, it's not surprising. I think that people just are looking for anything on this issue that can jump any sort of controversy, any sort of machinations they can kind of throw onto the Clinton family. I'm not particularly a Hillary Clinton fan, so I don't want to you know, sound like I'm on her side here. But I mean, all those emails she was sending to other people on staff are collected and stored. So we still have access to those copies and so forth. And it's email. You know, I, I don't know. I, I have a hard time getting that pissed off about this. But certainly people that don't want to see her win the next election are trying to make this into some sort of like leadership scandal. I mean, what's your take on this? Are you actually mad? Uh, I'm not mad. I think it is exactly what you're talking about. It's political. And, you know, when we saw the story about Jeb Bush uh, last week or two weeks ago when he released all those people's email addresses, it's sort of, you know, it's like that. that's the way that the news always portrays the Democrats are these evil while well, she's protecting her email. She's so smart. She had her own email address. And yeah. the Republicans are just like, oh, well, they're so dumb. They don't know what they're doing. I mean, that is, it's like, you know, and it's, I'm not saying that either one of those true. It's just stereotypes on both sides. And I think they're using yeah, technology it's, it's, yeah, to yeah. show that. I think it's lazy reporting in a lot of ways. I mean, like, I mean, people have said so many times how the 2012 Obama campaign was so technology-focused and so awesome, and I wonder how true that is. You know, I mean, I've heard that same narrative pushed by a number of different outlets, but I've always been a little like, eh. Um, but in this case, you know, anything involving Hillary is going to be, 
you know, it's going to be massive. So I mean, this is going to be the next, the tone of the next two years, if not more, um, through 16. Um, so I expect more of this sort of thing to come out and probably not do that much damage to her reputation or chances. So. Right. Well, thank you so much, Alex. I always love your take on all the tech news. Are you working on anything else that you're allowed to tell us about? I am working on a piece right now on Postmates, the delivery startup, but I'm trying to get out the door and I have somehow managed to not. So I'm going to, I'm going to go run and get that done and hopefully get it out today before my uh, next thing. Well, thank you. Alex Wilhelm thank is a you. reporter at TechCrunch and you can check up on what if he's doing on Twitter at, at Alex. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Coming up, a final report from Mobile World Congress and a new group of angel investors from Twitter. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. lynda.com is for problem solvers, for the curious, for people who want to make things happen. Maybe you want to master Excel, take better photos, update your resume, or learn the ins and outs of WordPress. lynda.com has everything you need to feed your curious mind. Some of the courses I recommend are Java Essentials Training, Google Analytics Essential Training, and HTML5 Structure, Syntax, and Semantics, where you can learn how to create richer, more meaningful web pages with HTML5 structural tags and enhanced semantic markup. With a lynda.com membership, you can stream thousands of video courses on demand, complete with transcripts, which allow you to follow along or search for an answer and skip to that point in the video. Your lynda.com membership gives you unlimited access to training on hundreds of topics, all for one flat rate. Whether you're looking to become an expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new. Visit lynda.com slash TN2 and sign up for your free 10-day trial. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. And we thank lynda.com for their support. Mike Elgin is still at Mobile World Congress today, and we have one final report from him. It's about an in-car entertainment system from a company called Accenture. Take it away, Mike. One of the big themes at Mobile World Congress is connected cars. Uh, it's part of the Internet of Things phenomenon. And we're here at the Accenture booth uh, looking at a really interesting partnership announced here at the show. Uh, can you tell me what your name is, please, and what you do for Accenture? Yeah, sure. I'm Raffaele from Accenture. I'm a senior manager. I'm responsible for the development of the onboard solutions for the Uconnect Live program. And can you tell us about that solution and, and how it works? Yeah, sure. The solution will be launched in a few weeks from now. It's been announced in Geneva, also in the auto car exhibition and here in the Mobile World Congress. And it's all about the new Fiat 500X and the Jeep Renegade that will be launched with this system and another system, similar system that is showcased in the other corner. And it is the connected vehicle experience across all the European countries. It goes through a mobile application. So there is a mobile application that is available for Android and iPhone so for both the, the two platforms. The users will download this application from the stores and once they get into the vehicle, the application gets connected to the head unit via Bluetooth or the USB cable if you prefer. Once you are connected, you know, all the applications will be live here and you get a series of different services and applications ready for you. One is, you know, the EcoDrive. This is a, one of the applications we have developed specifically for Fiat that takes, you know, how you, it, it records how you're driving and gives you scores in terms of acceleration, deceleration, speed and shifting. These data are also sent through the mobile phone to our backend platform because, you know, the user may want to review the data using the mobile application. And more importantly, we can use this data for additional services, of course, you know, with the willingness of the user, you know, but those data are the data that insurance companies may want to use, you know, for tailoring some specific policies around the users. Yeah, I hope you don't tell my insurance company about my acceleration. No, I will not. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, other application that you have, you know, is, is tuning. Like, you know, this is the typical web radio. If you have a tuning profile in your mobile phone, you will see, you know, your favorite music over here. And therefore, you can go into your favorites and you can play any radio in the world. So, be it in Barcelona, we can play a radio which is actually in the United States, or we can play in a radio in Japan as we did recently. And you see the quality is pretty good because we have adopted very, you know, sophisticated techniques for developing the application in the ad unit. So, to keep the music very smoothly, even when the car is moving. I like the fact that you're using TuneIn. It's a great service that isn't as popular as it should be. And of course, in addition to music, they have podcasts, including all of the Twit podcasts and our live feed. Uh, so we're a big fan of TuneIn, uh, but I'm sorry, go ahead and continue. We also have Deezer, you know, and you know, we are also making agreements with other content providers for adding applications because one good thing of this system is that all the applications that you see here can be downloaded over the air. So I don't need, you know, the user take a USB stick, you know, from the internet or going to the dealers. We can, you know, push 
updates in or new application or updates you know directly into the cars so and in a safe manner of course you know respecting security respecting all the driving distractions policies and, and that's over mobile broadband yeah it is over we are you know using a 4g connectivity through the mobile phone here so. uh, of course we have facebook we have twitter you know we have reuters so you you know you have the possibility to see the, the news and of course if the car is moving since we we don't want you know the user be distracted by reading the news you can actually listen the news. So there is a, using the steering wheel buttons, you can launch you know, the text-to-speech, and the system will read the news for you, okay? So this is another, another application where, you know, we, we have adopted, again, you know, all the driving distractions policies. And lastly, diagnostic. So people want to know, you know, how the car is doing, and also the car makers want to know, you know, the data from the vehicle. So this will enable really diagnostic, you know, for the car makers. So we can capture all the data in the vehicle and we can show the user, for instance, if there is any possible warning or, or issues. And the user, again, can listen, you know, what's going on. If they need to stop immediately or they can continue to travel, you know, because it's safe enough. Well, that was really interesting. It looks like you could have the news read to you, but he didn't say that Facebook could be read to you. So I just wanted to remind everyone not to check Facebook while you're driving. That's my public service announcement. Mike, of course, will be back on Monday. Uh, he will be doing uh, Tech News Today in the morning, an hour early, because of the Apple event. Uh, and if you want to see all of his coverage from Mobile World Congress, you can go to Twit Live Specials to see that. And those of you who have been clamoring for clickable links in Instagram, you know who you are. You can rejoice now, but only if you're an advertiser. Instagram announced today that they'd be giving advertisers two new features for their Instagram posts. First, they'll be able to offer links if people want to learn more uh, about the advertisement. And advertisers can also create posts with more than one image so the users can flip through them. The International Business Times is reporting that HBO's subscription streaming service will cost $15 a month and it will be called HBO Now. Apple TV will be one of the launch partners, according to International Business Time. This is good news for me because $15 is about exactly what I paid in late fees at the library last month when I checked out the season three of Girls and forgot to return it. And another good cord, cord cutter news, Sling announced today they'll be adding AMC to their $20 a month subscription. And finally, two former Twitter execs and four current Twitter execs just announced that they'd be starting a new investment group called Hashtag Angels. According to their post on Medium this afternoon, the women are collaborating together, but will be making individual angel investments and not forming a fund. And since some of them are still at Twitter, they won't be investing in companies that could create a conflict of interest from a competitive or a potential acquisition point of view. You can find more about these female executives at helloangels.co. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific. I'll be hosting again tomorrow and Friday for Mike. It's at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.